Hi friends, it's Claire and today I am so excited to be sharing with you my reading plans for 2021. Oh my gosh, saying 2021 feels so good. <laughs> I'm not typically someone who can stick to a TBR. I am very much a mood reader and I am definitely a comfort reader, so depending on what's going on in my life, I tend to gravitate towards the same books or the same authors. <laughs> so this video is a mix of some of my reading goals for the year as well as my most anticipated releases and a very exciting announcement. I'm not gonna keep you waiting. Let's just start off with my announcement. <laughs> I am beyond excited to share that I will be co-hosting my first ever read-along, along with Catherine from Catherine Zofri, Mare from Mare Reads, Nicole from Nicole Reads, and Katie from Katie Can't Read. I will be co-hosting the Grishaverse read-along. I have never read a single book by Leigh Bardugo, and her books have been on my TBR for a long time now. I don't even know what a Grisha is. Very excited to find out. I was actually planning on reading Six of Crows back in the fall before my entire life was consumed by Rick Riordan's books, I get invested in my read-alongs. So the timing could not be more perfect. I'll pop all of the dates and information up here as well as link it down below. But we will be kicking the readathon off with Shadow and Bone starting January 3rd, and our first live show will be on Maris channel on January 17th. I will be hosting the Siege and Storm live show on January 31st, and this will be the first time I've ever hosted a live show. It's my first time ever hosting a read-along. I feel like such a booktuber. All of these books that we read will be leading us up to the release of Rule of Wolves in April. All of the live show information is right here as well as in the description box down below. You know how it is. It's going to be such a fun time. This is such a wonderful group of girls. I cannot believe how lucky I am to get to host alongside of these brilliant creative ladies. Join our Discord which will also be linked down below so we can discuss everything Grishaverse, whatever the heck a Grisha is. If you don't know, Come and learn with me. Another exciting thing about the timing of this read-along is the Shadow and Bone Netflix show will also be coming out in April. So we will be reading the books and then we'll be able to watch and discuss the show together. We are going to be consumed with the Grisha content. I really hope that you'll be joining us. I absolutely love participating in read-alongs. I love getting to meet new people through a shared love of the same books, so I really hope that you'll be joining us. All right, so on- oh, I just almost fell over. I didn't even trip on anything, just my own feet. On to the next section of this video, my goals for 2021. I, alongside I think everyone else, surpassed my 2020 goal months ago. There was no way of knowing that this was going to be the state of the world and that I would have so much reading time. I, as of now, have read 74 books this year, but by the time this video is up, I have a feeling I will have reached my new goal of 75 books. I actually bumped my goal up to 60 books a few months ago because the most books I had ever read in a year was 55, so I was hoping I could at least surpass that, and then once I hit 60, I bumped my goal up to 75. I've been struggling with this 2021 goal. I always like to be in competition with myself and surpass my own past achievements. So as tempted as I am to make my goal 100 books, <laughs> I also know that already I am so much busier than I was back at the beginning of this pandemic when all I was doing was staying home and reading. I am working full time. I don't really know what's in store for my job and if my contract will be renewed or not, so I might have more reading time on my hands. But I also need to not set myself up for failure. So I'm going to make my goal. I can't decide. I want to make it higher than what I achieved this year just because I want to do that for myself, but also I don't know if I'll even reach 75 next year. I have discovered the magic of graphic novels, which I never read before, so that will help me out a lot. I'm gonna make my goal. <sighs> I'm gonna make my goal 80. I'm gonna hate myself for doing that. Fine, graphic novels, baby, graphic novels. That's gonna be the way of the world. Yep, my goal is 80 books decided right here, right now. You saw it live. Will I achieve it? Who knows? I think mentally I'm going to push myself for 100 because I never in my life imagined I could read 100 books in a year. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was possible for me to read more than 50 ever again. So 
Mentally, we're going for 100, but on that Goodreads challenge, we're putting in 80. I only have a few specific books that I need to read this year. I've just put them off for too long, and I've been telling myself year after year that this will be the year I read it, and then I don't, so I'm putting it in a video. Please hold me accountable, please. I will not do it unless someone makes me. The first goal, I've been saying it on videos for months now. I need to read The Lord of the Rings. I need to, I need to, I need to. I've talked to a friend about reading The Hobbit together, so I'm hoping that that will like mm, push me into it. I feel like that's the final series that I need to read to feel like a truly accomplished reader. I don't read a lot of classics, so maybe I need to read more classics too, but I feel like there are specific series that people who aren't readers will be like, have you read these books? And I'm like, no, I have not. So I need to read these books. I need to. My next goal is to finally read The Outsiders. This actually was brought to my attention recently. I was watching Nat's videos over on Nerdy Nat Reads. She brought up The Outsiders and I was like, ha, I haven't read that book. And she was like, what do you mean you haven't read The Outsiders? I think every class in my middle school had to read that book, except for my class. We got Catherine called Birdie. I did not like Catherine called Birdie. I've been meaning to read The Outsiders ever since I was in middle school. Every year I reread Fangirl and in Fangirl they read the outsiders and every year I'm like right I need to pick that book up and then I just don't gotta do that this one is solely for M I need to read crown of feathers <laughs> it's another one that's been on my TBR since she read it because she fell in love with these books and I trust M's opinion so much she knows me as a reader inside out she knows what I like and what I don't like so anytime she reads a book and she's like you need to read this I know that I will love it I just have it I just haven't picked it up but I promise I will M I promise I love you. And finally, I would like to finish reading all of Rick Riordan's books because I read Percy Jackson and I read the Heroes of Olympus series this year and right now I'm gonna take a little bit of a Rick Riordan break because that's all I've been reading for months now. And I don't really have any problems with it. I love it. But I think I need to like step away from that world for a while, consume some other bookish content, and then step back in. I really want to read The Trials of Apollo, and I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna read Magnus Chase, because I just want, I want my Heroes of Olympus characters. You know what I'm saying? I also need to go back and read The King Chronicles. I read the first two when I was in middle school and just never picked up the last one. Could not tell you why, because I loved those books. And then apparently there's like some novellas that have Carter and Sadie from The King Chronicles and Percy and Annabeth, my faves. You know how it has to be. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into these anticipated reads. There are so many books coming out in 2021, and I feel like there are a lot that are specific to my tastes that I haven't heard a lot of just because I love me some YA contemporary. 